what's most important, like I said, is just that parents, I think, realize that this is a really important part of ending this pandemic. Um, I think this is something that we've all been really excited and waiting for. Hi there, it's WAMC News Director Ian Pickus. And on this episode of the WAMC News Podcast, we talk about what to expect when bringing your child in for a COVID-19 vaccine. States here in the Northeast are rolling out COVID-19 vaccines for kids between ages 5 and 11 after the CDC gave the go-ahead to youngsters receiving the Pfizer shot. Authorities say there's enough supply for the 28 million children in the age group. It requires two shots three weeks apart. This will be an enormous step forward and a significant opportunity to protect as many people as possible. We've been getting ready here in the state of New York. We have been talking to pediatricians, doctor's offices, the pharmacies, the drugstores. This means that your kids will be able to stay in school, stay in school safely, stay in school and not have to quarantine. I spoke with Dr. Kristen Navarrete, a pediatrician who serves as medical director of MVP Healthcare. Thanks for having me. What should parents know who are listening right now about the safety and the efficacy of a vaccine for children against COVID-19? I think the most important thing for parents to know is that this vaccine was studied at great length and after intense review, it was determined to be safe and in fact, very effective, upwards of 90% effective for children in this age group. So parents should have a lot of confidence that um, this vaccine was studied at length and that all of the experts have good confidence in this vaccine as well. What kind of concerns are you hearing uh, from people who, you know, have been awaiting the, the CDC approval and are maybe still on the fence about vaccinating their kids? I think the biggest concern that I'm hearing is that a lot of parents worry that this vaccine is very new. And of course, with that always comes the natural concern that parents feel about giving something new to their children. I think what's important for them to remember, though, is that the research behind this vaccine um, is decades in the making. The vaccine technology has been studied for other uses for a long time, and this is really kind of the moment we were waiting for um, where we found that this vaccine would be effective for COVID. Um, And so even though we didn't see this vaccine being used for other diseases in the past, the technology has been studied for a long time. So I think that should give them reassurance that even though it's new because Um, We just didn't have a use for it yet. Um, We really have had a lot of research behind this vaccine. We have uh, understood during the course of the pandemic that in general, COVID outcomes among children were not as severe as older uh, people who have caught the virus. So why is it important for children to get the vaccine uh, in light of that? That's a really important question. And I think that's absolutely a fair point that parents make. But I think what's really important is that while children have not been as severely affected, and we're all very grateful for that, um, it doesn't mean that they have not been affected. And there's lots of ways that kids have been affected. Um, First, we know that there have been children who have been hospitalized. We've had over 8,300 hospitalizations in this age group alone. Um, And one third of those children did not have an underlying health condition, meaning that they were healthy kids, and they still ended up in the hospital from this disease. We also know that one third of those children that were hospitalized ended up in the ICU. So they had severe disease that needed really intense medical treatment. Um, And sadly, we know that children have even died from COVID-19. There were 94 children, in fact, who tragically died from COVID-19. So I think it's really important for parents to remember that low risk doesn't mean no risk and that there have been some really negative outcomes uh, for some children. And so this is an important piece of protecting your child going forward. I think the other thing to remember is that there's been a lot of other outcomes on children that have not been so great. I think in particular, the lost time in school uh, from infections and quarantines. And by vaccinating children, we'll be able to make sure that they can stay in school. Um, And that way they'll have less uh, lost time from learning. They'll be able to socialize with their friends, which is something that I know a lot of families have not been doing as a way to keep their children safe. So I think what's most important for parents to remember that this is an important part of getting their children back to doing some of those activities that maybe they haven't been doing for quite some time because of the pandemic. We know that children are routinely vaccinated for things like MMR, 
uh, during the course of childhood, and they, in many cases, need those shots to to go to school and so on. How does uh, adding the COVID vaccine uh, to that list of immunizations uh, work in your view? I mean, is this something that, you know, parents should sign up for uh, immediately for their child? Can they wait until their next scheduled checkup? How should that work? Yeah, I think all parents should try to make their appointment for their child as soon as possible to get them vaccinated for COVID-19. Um, as of right now, there's no requirement for that to go to school. Uh, but like I said, it will help ensure that they are able to stay in school by getting their COVID-19 vaccine. So I think wherever parents are most comfortable to get their child vaccinated, whether that's at the pediatrician's office or at their local pharmacy, they can even call their local health department. I think they should try to reach out and make those appointments as soon as possible. Adults who have gotten the vaccine have reported, you know, a variety of uh, effects uh, next day, arm soreness, maybe, you know, not feeling 100 percent after taking uh, the jab. Is there any sign of that in children who are receiving a, a smaller dose of vaccine? Yeah, we definitely do see some side effects, and, and that's not all uncommon or unexpected. Like you said, we see that with our other routine childhood vaccinations. We see that with the flu vaccination. And it's important to remember that what a vaccine is doing is turning on your immune system so that it can remember parts of that virus so that it can fight it off the next time. And that's a good thing. And so the side effects that we see are really just symptoms of your immune system doing the job that we want it to do. And so it's not uncommon for some people to have a little bit of fatigue, maybe um, a little bit of a fever um, and things like that. So, you know, I think parents should expect similar side effects to things that they have experienced with their children when they get their other vaccines. Um, they should talk with their doctor about different ways to help support their children through that. Do you anticipate that children, just like adults now, will need a booster somewhere down the line? That's a great question. And, you know, I think that we're going to be watching this vaccine very closely for a long time. Um, and so as the science uh, continues to emerge and we see how long the immunity lasts and children will know better um, in a few months from now whether or not kids might need boosters. Because you're a pediatrician, I wonder, um, has COVID affected uh, the kids you see in, in ways that maybe we haven't been talking about, you know, just in terms of catching the virus? Um, but it seems to me, you know, it's been a difficult uh, time to be a kid in the last couple of years with so many disruptions. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, we have been seeing a lot of unintended consequences from this pandemic. Um, I think, you know, I mentioned before the lost time in school, um, and, and that certainly has effects on kids' social, emotional health and well-being. I think some of the social distancing we see has been difficult for kids. You know, kids want to be with their friends and they want to play. Um, and so I think there has been certainly a lot of uh, difficulty with some of the social emotional health, their mental well-being. We've seen a lot of rising cases of anxiety and depression and other behavioral and mental health concerns. Um, so I think, again, you know, the vaccine is really a way to help kids get back to their regular activities that maybe they haven't been doing. And I think that's a really important part to help them have some sense of normalcy. Um, and that'll really hopefully help get them more engaged with their peers and back at school to hopefully alleviate some of those behavioral and mental health concerns. I think that's a really important part of this. Uh, this is not just a COVID question, but a, a general question. A lot of kids don't like getting shots no matter what's in it. What's your approach when you have uh, a squirmer who comes in? Yeah, I actually just went through that with my own kids this morning. So I totally understand that. Um, I think as a parent, that's one of the things that causes us anxiety before we go and get our kids vaccinated is we worry that they're going to be scared. Um, so I think it's most important for parents to be honest with their children and upfront. I think no surprises is an important approach. Um, but I think using things to distract kids and encourage them and give them that positive reinforcement is really important as well. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think what's most important, like I said, is just that parents, I think, realize that this is a really important part of ending this pandemic. Um, I think this is something that we've all been really excited and waiting for, especially those of us with kids in this age group, so that we can help get our kids back to the activities and the routines that they know and love. And so I think parents should have good confidence in this vaccine and really consider it. And if they have any questions, they should definitely reach out to their health care provider and get those questions answered. MVP Healthcare Medical Director Dr. Kristen Navarrete is a pediatrician. Uh, thank you so much for spending this time with us and uh, stay safe. Thanks so much. All right, that does it for this episode of the WAMC News Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, 
I'm Ian Pickus.